This video is going to show you how to draw a motion diagram and some of the things you can do with it. So here's the setup. I've got a car that's going to cross, go across the screen from left to right, a little clock that's going to take off some time. Call them seconds, call it minutes, call it hours, whatever it is on the top. And what's going to happen is as the car goes through an equal time interval, let's say every second, my computer is going to take a picture of the car and place it on the screen so all the car's motions will be on one slide or one photograph. Here we go. So as the car has moved, I've taken a picture of it and put all the pictures on the same photograph. Now let's take a look at this and what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a dot at an equal time interval. Call it a second, a minute, an hour. In this case it's seconds. And I'm going to call that just a, a tick of time. And the tick of time is just a time interval, any time interval. It could be every 5 seconds, 10 seconds, whatever that interval is. So here's a dot where the car's position is located for every second or every tick of time. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take an arrow starting from the very beginning and I'll connect the dots with the arrow. There we go. That right there, that in the red circle, is the motion diagram. Okay, so now let's look at some things we can get off this motion diagram. First off, the velocity. So velocity is defined as displacement over time. No matter what the time interval says on your watch, whatever that time is between each dot, we're just going to call it one. So if it's five seconds, we're going to call it one tick of time. If it's 30 seconds, we'll call that one tick of time. If it's an hour, we'll call it one tick of time. If it's 23 and a half hours, we'll call it one tick of time. So these are equal time intervals, one tick of time, and we'll call it one, which means if I take the displacement divided by one, that's going to give me a velocity. So each one of these vectors is a velocity. So this diagram contains a lot of information. First, it contains the position of the car at every interval of time, and every tick of the t of time on our clock. It also, the vectors themselves, are velocity vectors, so I can see the velocity. And it also contains acceleration information. So if I take a look at the final and initial velocity of the two velocities on the far right, I can see how they compare to each other. So the final velocity is on the bottom, the initial velocity is on the top. So I can see the initial is the one that occurred first in time, and the final is greater than the initial, so I had to add a little piece of velocity to get to the final velocity. And that difference in the velocity is acceleration. And that's what acceleration does, is it changes the velocity. So in this case, it added to it. So I can tell the direction of the acceleration. It's a positive acceleration going from left to right, assuming going to the right is positive. So what else can I tell my motion diagram? Well, I can tell that there's a region of the motion where it's a constant velocity and a region of the motion where it's an accelerated, um, an acceleration has occurred. So here is where it's a constant velocity because the arrows are all the same length. And here where the blue circle is, that's going to be an area of acceleration. And in fact, I know from down below it's an area of positive acceleration. And I can tell one more piece of information from this. I can create a graph, just a simple basic graph to give you some idea of what's going on. A velocity over time is an easy graph. I can also do a distance over time. Let's start with the velocity over time. So velocity versus time graph, this motion diagram has two pieces, a constant piece and an accelerated piece. So on a velocity diagram, if it's a constant velocity, that means if I read the y-axis, it's the same value at every moment in time. So that's just a horizontal line, and that's the constant velocity. The second section is the acceleration. And we know that it's a positive acceleration from that little experiment we did earlier. So that means it's on a velocity versus time graph, an acceleration is a slope since it's a positive acceleration, it's going to be a positive slope. So it's going to go upwards. And that's going to be the region of acceleration on our graph. So there's the uh, motion diagram. Motion diagram, I can tell regions of constant velocity, regions of changing velocity or acceleration. I can also compare two vectors and see if it's a positive or negative acceleration. I can tell the position. I can tell, tell this tick of time, how time has passed, what it's moved, and I can tell the velocity. And from all that, I can create a velocity versus time, or even later on, a position versus time graph. Now, one more thing about this. Let's describe the motion in words. So if I look at it, I've got two sections, a constant velocity and accelerated velocity. So what I can say is the car moved for four ticks of time at a constant velocity, that's the red, and then sped up at a positive acceleration for three ticks of time. So in my description, I'm telling something about the time and something about the motion, I'm telling it's constant velocity, and even if it's positive or negative, I can add that component to it as well like I did with the acceleration.